everyone, and welcome to our first virtual School Library Journal Day of Dialogue. My name is Luann Toth, and I'm program coordinator for this year's event. Um, before we begin, I'd like to cover a few okay. housekeeping items. Um, please feel free to navigate um, the windows on your screen. If you need some troubleshooting help or navigation tips, just click on the appropriate widget on the bottom of your screen. You can also send a note through the Q&A window if you need assistance or have any questions for our speakers. Now, um, we've had just a tad of technical issues here. But um, we are going to forge on anyway. Um, In the world of picture books, it is the exception rather than the rule that an author and an illustrator are true collaborators and even friends, or that they even work as a team. But that is the case when it comes to Derek Barnes and Gordon James. Their first collaboration, called Crown, an Ode to the Fresh Cut, and oh, could we all use a fresh cut about now, it was published in 2017 and went on to garner award attention from the Newberry and Caldecott committees, the Credit Scott King committees, the Kirkus Prize Jury, and the Society of Illustrators. The new collaboration from these two creators is something to look forward to. And as it happens, it's coming out this fall. The book is called I Am Every Good Thing, and it's being published by Nancy Paulson Books. And so um, we are going to be hearing from these collaborators today, and um, we're going to hear from Derek first. Hello, this is Derek Barnes. Hope everyone is doing well. I am uh, safe and sound, taking care of my family, my, my beautiful wife, who is uh, a physician, and she's out of the house two days out of the week, Dr. Tinker Bourne, doing COVID-19 testing. And so that means I'm at home with my four sons, Ezra, who's home from college, um, Solomon, 15, uh, Silas, who was the cover boy for Crown, 13, and my eight-year-old son, Nambi will be nine next month. So oh, I have a, a small academy here. We're still getting work done <laughs> and, and, and still writing and still taking care of business. Gordon James is in his studio, and he's going to uh, give us a little tour there as well. So uh, my name is Gordon C. James, and I am the illustrator of Every Good Thing. And I've known Derek for quite a while. It's been about 19 years. I measure yeah, our man. friendship by the oldest, you know. And um, I'm here, but I live here. Uh, we also I live in Charlotte, North Carolina, with uh, my wife Ingrid, my uh, son Gabriel, my daughter Astrid, and our dog Rascal. And um, I'm gonna I'm gonna do something. I I probably shouldn't do to show you guys my really messy studio, but this is where I work and we're not even going to turn around and do the lounge area, but I'm just happy that you guys would come out and um, speak to us and, um, and that you guys are interested in hearing about this labor of love that we have called I am every good thing. And, um, you know, uh, since Derek and I are going to talk about it, I wanted to ask Derek, cause I know the story of how the, the, uh, of how the text came about, but I wanted Derek to be able to tell you guys how he came up with the idea for the book. Yeah, so, um, you know, we, we, we've been in Charlotte now about six years now. And when we first moved here, it was 2014. That was, and that, around that time was um, 
we we moved here from Kansas City, Missouri. And before we, before we moved here, uh, the big thing that was happening was the Trayvon Martin uh, trial in, 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 in case. And um, and then uh, the Mike Brown situation happened. And and then Tamir Rice. And after each incident, I was working on a, a poem. I never did finish it, but um, I wrote pieces of, you know, just expressing, you know, just my anger and frustration and having to sit down with my sons and have the same dialogue over and over again, um, which, which is why I dedicated this book to um, a few of those young men. Um, I dedicated it to Tamir Rice, who was uh, playing outside with a toy gun and was murdered by a police officer, Trayvon Martin, um, E.J. Bradford, Jordan Edwards, Michael Brown, Jordan Davis, and Julian Mallory. And um, one thing that all these young men had in common is they, well, a couple of things, they were all unarmed. None of them were involved in any kind of criminal activity. I hate even having to say that, you know. And um, the second thing is they, they all came from families that loved and appreciated them and held them up. And Gordon has... Uh, a beautiful son and uh, daughter. I have four beautiful sons, and you know, just having to explain to them, just, the, just, just, you know, all the background and history that goes into interaction between black boys and black men and police officers, and and and, and really just a love hate relationship I feel America has with black men, and it's just centered around you know stereotypes of and you know hate. And fear. So, and, and so, so, you know, go I was going to say that this is a question that I have for you because, um, because so, so for those of you guys who don't, so those of you who don't know, like Derek emailed me this, right? And I probably got the email sometime around like, it might have been like midnight. It was late. And I remember I yeah. got it. I'm laying in bed. I'm, I'm looking at my phone and I read it. And like, um, I yelled out into the living room to my wife. I was like, I'm sending you this. Derek just sent me this. I'm sending it to you. This is amazing. You got to read it. And um, what what I find that is interesting about the text is that um, though it comes out of that, out of that injustice, it's not really focused on the injustices. It is focused on like, like the 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 worth and agency of the of the of the children, you instead of um instead of it focuses on the people they are instead of the things that have been done to them or the things that they are going through, and um and how just wondering like how you managed to strike that balance. Well, you know, I, I um I, I I feel like I've dedicated my life especially as an artist to the upliftment of black and brown boys black and brown children even in 2020 now i still feel like there is a, a need i mean we shouldn't have to write books like i am every good thing like crown where i, I have to I almost feels like we've proven our humanity you know to the rest of the world but the voice that I try to write in is, is one that's very confident, it's very uplifting, because when, when little black and brown boys get these books in their hands, I want them to almost memorize these lines. You know, it's, it's about affirmation and feeling good about who you are and knowing that you belong in this world like everybody else, no matter what's going on around you, that there are people that love you, there are people that pray for you every single day, there are people that want you to win in life, you know? No matter what you see, I say all the time, inside our home, our boys, the Mighty Bones brothers, they are they are stars. And I'm going to build them up because they may not get that same kind of love when they go out. So I write in the same type of vein. I write in the same kind of voice. You know, I think that that's very important. I wouldn't have felt like in um, 2020 that um, we would have needed the book the way it is. It is, it is almost turned out to be... Um, 
too timely with what's going on right now. And what people might not know about me is that my father's a police officer. So all the guys that raised me, police officers, and to some extent, is the firemen. And, um, but I always saw both sides of it because my father actually worked internal affairs. And so like, I would also hear the stories of all these cops that he was going to get because they weren't doing the right thing. And um, it's just, it's just crazy that we are still at this place. Um, you know, um, I think we're like halfway through. And what I, what I wanted to do is, um, is um, if I could, Derek, like take just a couple minutes and tell like, tell people kind of how the text touched me. Sure. And for me, um, what the text did is um, when I when I read it, you know, like it just seemed to be so important. It seemed to be so broad that I felt like I saw lot, like lots of boys, like, you know, like just the whole diaspora, like like all skin tones, you know, all, um, you know, all shades, kids that live in the city, kids that grow up rural. You know, it just seemed to be, um, it just seemed to be this message. And while, you know, the, I felt like while the, the, the focus is African-American boys, it's, I feel like the messages are messages that, that um, any child can take with them through life. But it is just awesome that um, boys that look like my and your son and kids that look like my daughter and you know like they can see themselves in this book with that uplifting and positive message yeah i was thinking about earlier how you and i come from two completely different backgrounds uh gordon is um you know raised in um suburbs of washington dc a uh, two-parent household i'm from the midwest single parent household. Uh, my mother uh, had a high school education. And here we end up in the same spot, you know, uh, working for the same company. We met at Hallmark and, and now we're on our second book together. And it, it's just a microcosm of what we're talking about in this uh, our book. You know, boys, especially black boys, you come from all walks of life. You know, whether you live in the Marcy Project in uh, Brooklyn or you live, are you from Baldwin Hills? You know, we got this Again, they have the same aspirations, goals, dreams, and people that care about them. I, I, again, I, I got four. I got four boys. They got four totally different personalities, and I just I want to do my best to, to 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 express these differences. And we are not a monolith. And just I, I want America to just kind of zap out all these negative stereotypes that you might have about black boys, and understand that we feel the same way about our children that you feel about yours. So uh, are you about to share some more words? Well, um, you know, so, so uh, let's, what was I going to, my, my brain just, my just left me. I was going to tap onto that. I just wanted, um, I just wanted people to know that, like, um, that, that our kids are people, you know, my son who is on the cover and I'll grab the cover art, art and bring it a little closer. Um, he's, he's diagnosed autistic. And, you know, he is, you know, excuse me, I just stumbled a little bit. He is, you know, he's got his own personality and he's living his best life. And when you hear these things that happen to kids and they, they say, well, if he had just done this or if he had just done that, you know, um, everybody's ability to do, to comply or do whatever people are yelling at them is completely different. And if you, and if people would take the time to get to know our children, they would understand that, you know, they're just not to be feared. They're just here to be loved. And so, um, so I think we're, we're at about the 12 minute mark. And, um, and Derek, if you want to, uh, maybe read a couple of the pages, maybe share the text, maybe that goes with, um, with, uh, this page that starts off the book. I could, I, I'll read all the way up until, I guess we'll do halfway. We can't, we can't give you the whole thing right now, but I really enjoy reading this book, man. I wish we could, we could read the whole thing, but. Um, all right, well, I'll if you're going to do that, to, then I'm going to yeah. draw while you do it. Cool. That'll work. 
I am Every Good Thing, written by Derek Barnes and illustrated by Gordon C. James. This book is dedicated to the memory of Tamir Rice, Trayvon Martin, E.J. Bradford, Jordan Edwards, Michael Brown, Jordan Davis, and Julian Mallory. To my son Gabriel and all little brothers like him, Gordon's dedication. I am every, I am a nonstop ball of energy, powerful and full of light. I'm a go getter, a difference maker, a leader. I am every good thing that makes the world go round. You know, like gravity or the glow of moonbeams over a field of brand new snow. I am good to the core, like the center of a cinnamon roll. Yeah, that good. I am skateboard tricks, scraped knees and elbows. But you know what? I am right back on my feet again. I am one eye open, one eye closed, peeking through a microscope, gazing through a telescope, checking out the spaces around me and plotting out those far off places I have yet to go, the will. I am a gentleman and a scholar. I am kind and polite like, yes, ma'am, and yes, sir, helping my grandmother to cross the street, saying, bless you when a stranger has to sneeze. I'm a cool breeze, a perfect paper airplane that glides for blocks, for miles, forever. I'm a roaring flame of creativity, I'm a lightning round of questions and a star-filled sky of solutions. I'm an explorer, planting the flag on every square foot of this planet where I belong. I am a sponge soaking up information, knowledge, and wisdom. I want it all, and I am all is. Just got to stop right there. <laughs> Somebody said, can go and bring this email to the camera? Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, the easiest thing is to move the computer closer to the easel. Yeah. So, um, so uh, I think we can maybe do a little bit of Q&A, but we have a few minutes left. We have five left. Sure. Um, I don't know if it was a bigger treat to... Uh, hear your beautiful words, Derek, or watch this piece of art uh, materialize before our eyes. Um, thanks for sharing both of them. Thank um, you. Um, I guess the natural question would be, uh, what do your boys think of your book? I know they're you know, older now than the picture book audience, but uh, what were they uh, as impressed as all the, the critics? <laughs> well, you know, one thing one thing I've learned is, is being I've been a father now over twenty years now. My oldest boy is about to be twenty, and uh, just one of the things I learned just 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 from the elders and just trial and error in regards to being a father and being a husband is. You know, children pay attention to every single thing that you do, not so much the things that you say, even though I feel like I'm a live-in motivational speaker and um, just like a quote machine. But, it, you know, it's, it's, it's nothing new to them, I guess. You know what I mean? Like, like they, are, they are used to uh, us having conversations about culture and about uh, race and about history. And so this is – you know, my artwork is uh, – just an extension of how we live our lives, you know, every single day. So I've just turned it into a book. I know that um, my, my son, Gabriel, he likes the idea that he's on a book. He loved that um, I was able to uh, uh, show a couple of his teachers that he was going to be on the cover in his last school. He's moving on to middle school now. And, um, and that book will probably be in his middle school too. So he takes he takes some pride. He takes some pride. He knows, you know, which is pretty cool. Yeah. And my daughter really likes that I do books because um, her last school is school for gifted children, and it went up to the uh, eighth grade. 
So when um, so my books are going to be at her old school too. So that's pretty cool. And um, my last uh, was there um, the book fair. So she takes a lot of pride. Cool. Actually, um... Um, uh, Charles would like to know what advice would you give to young writers and artists? Uh, you know, we both get we both get emails all the time about you know, you know, collaborating. I'm sure um, Gordon gets email from from writers that want to uh, work with him, and I get emails from people who who uh, want to get into the industry. And my advice always is to read as much as you can. When I when I first started working at Hallmark Cards, one of the um, you know one of the common phrases uh, around the company, especially for writers, was, you know, to develop your own voice. And so that's something that I'm still working on. You know, I, I want people to be able to read a piece of my work and know that it's me. And I, I'm still trying to get better. I don't, I don't think that that, that learning is, is, is ever going to die down. I mean, I always want to get better. So I would say read everything that you, that you get your hands on, read the works of your favorite writers, and try to weave in some of the some of the devices that they use into your own voice. And so you can develop your own style, you know? So, um, yeah, yeah, read constantly, everything. I think um, for someone that wants to be an illustrator, I would just say, you know, draw, draw, draw. I draw from life as often as I get a chance to. You know, um, don't even make it a big deal. You know, carry a sketchbook around with you or a tablet or draw on your phone, whatever you have to do so that you're just always it's, it's practice, but it's not work because it's what you do for fun. And um, that's what I would say. Like, the more, if you can draw, you can do just about anything. And so I just say, draw and practice and go to museums. Get out. Get out and about and look for the art. You know, look for the art in your neighborhood. Look for the art in your community. Really look at things, the way they're made, the way somebody, everything you touch, somebody designed it first. So... Draw, 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 and really look around. Um, is there a difference between um, painting? Uh, how do you approach painting and illustrating in 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 in, the, in a different way? And how how? Believe it or not, um, the techniques are about the same. Like I really, really try to, um, I really, really try to um, illustrate in the same way that I paint. You know, I may have a little faster because of the deadline, but I've learned that children can really take sophisticated fine artsy art and they enjoy it. And so I try to give kids like really beautiful, sophisticated oil paintings, like 17 to 24 at a time in picture book form, and they seem to respond well to it. I think I, I, have, um, a, I, I have, have some more. Of, uh, I, I was just saying, I have uh, I have a lot of artwork from a lot of my favorite children's book illustrators up around the house. I don't think I have any. I have one thing from you. I have the cover of Crown, but. I need some more Gordon C. James originals, man, to add to my office, man. We need to make that happen. That. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, people are asking when this book is available. When uh, is it right now? Pre-order anywhere. Pre-order anywhere that uh, books are sold. Uh, it comes out September the first. Hopefully, uh, things, yeah. Hopefully, things will open up uh, a little bit more, and maybe we'll be able to go out and hit the road in the spring sometimes. Hopefully, uh, Gordon and I yeah. we have never been on tour together, so you know that'd be great. Yeah. Well, so many of the comments in the in the Q and A are just saying how vitally important uh, this your work is right now, and how they uh, people are desperate for this kinds of books. So. Um, the more we can get the word out, the better. Um, uh, one question is from, is, uh, from someone named Alice. Where uh, This is for Derek. Where do you get your inspiration to write? 
And do you have a favorite writing style? Well, we, I think we know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, I get my inspiration from trying to fill in those gaps, trying to fill in those holes. Like I said, there's, there's, still a, uh, there's still a dearth of books. I mean, things have gotten much better over the past 15, 20 years. But I, I try to look at the market and see what's out there and what's missing and, and, and whose voices are not being heard. And I write, I, I, I think I, I try to approach my uh, work in a very lyrical way, in a very conversational and authentic way. I'm a big music fan. I, I listen to jazz while I'm writing. Uh, I love classic hip hop. I'm talking about hip hop from the golden era. So between 86 and maybe mid 90s. And so I, I try to write in a very lyrical way. And um, like I said, I just try to fill in those holes. You know, whatever's missing, whoever's story is not being told, I got you. That's me. That's that's my role. Uh, I'm I'm having a hard time keeping up with all these questions. Um, <laughs> uh, someone, um, uh, Kamara, asks: Is it ever difficult for you to get words on paper? And what do you do when that happens? Is that for me? Yes. You know, I, I I don't believe in the idea of, you know, writer's block. The only thing that keeps me from working is just, you know, just being tired. Like I said, we have a, a small company here, um, you know, with you know, four children and what my wife does for a living. And so if, if, if I just have time to myself, you know, to write, I'm I'm gonna sit down and I'll work. And as soon as this as soon as this uh this is over with, I'm getting back to work, you know. There's just, there's so many stories to be told, there's so many there's so many lives, um there's so many things that are going on in the real world. And I, I just feel like as artists it's our job to hold a mirror up to it and to you know, hopefully in Gordon's case, you know, paint just a beautiful picture around things. It's it's our job just to rework life so that we can digest it beautifully and make things a little bit better. So I I never run out of things to write. It's just about time and wearing myself out sometimes. Uh, Gordon understands that. We, we both were talking about this earlier, just being exhausted, uh, just doing regular family things. But, uh, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't experience writer's block. You know what? I actually have advice on that. <laughs> Believe it or not, I'm not a writer. But what I find is that, you know, if you set a schedule and and you have a place that's dedicated to whatever creative pursuit that you have and you go to that place, same time, okay, and you sit down to write the amount or you sit down to paint or you sit or you go in to dance or whatever it is, just the mere fact of being there, it's going to get to be routine to you and your body is going to just make you do it. And the amount of time you're able to do it is gonna be longer and longer and longer and longer. And you will be able to write, you, you won't have blocks. You won't have blocks. And you know, the other thing is too, we get up every day and we do things we don't wanna do for other people for our day jobs. And then when we get home, we go, oh, I don't wanna draw. So, so it's, it's in there, you got it. You won't have blocks, you just make it a routine. You won't have blocks. Yeah. Well, we're going to have to wrap things up, but I wanted to just uh, read this one last comment before we go. And uh, this is from Amy from, um, I don't know where this library is, but she says, it's so exciting that after 30 years in libraries that I get to see these beautiful works that bring us to the future. Thank you for your creativity and your inspiration. And I have to say, that seems like a great way to wrap things up. Thank you so much, Derek and Gordon, for uh, sharing your work with us today. Oh man, thank you. All right. Thank you for having us. It's, 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 I always say it's always uh, it's always. I miss the kids. I miss going out and doing school visits. It's always a blessing that anybody will gather to hear you speak about anything that you've created. So, it, you know, the onus is on us to to, to try to create something positive. Um, that will hopefully change the way people think about the world and the way that they, they think about themselves. So 
Thank you for having us. Thank oh, well, you um, for and everyone. Oh, go ahead. All right. Thanks, everybody. Peace, y'all. Take Jordan. care of yourself. All righty. Thank you, everyone, for attending today. This webcast will be archived and available um, very soon. And uh, remember, if you miss any live session or if the session is full, you can always watch the recording. We'll now have a short break. Please visit the booth and check out the author chat schedule. We will have two concurrent panels at 3 o'clock, new imprints and young adults. Thank you. All right.